What's up, everybody? This is the Welcome to the Show podcast. I'm Manny Gomez, and today we're bringing you a bonus podcast with a special guest, Alex Katz, at Kitty El Gato on Twitter and Instagram. Alex is a product of Long Island, New York. He's a St. John's grad, a current minor league prospect for the Chicago White Sox, and a former member of Team Israel in the 2017 WBC. He's the co-founder of KD Custom Kicks, where you can create your own custom cleats or sneakers or purchase a unique pair already designed by guys like Alex and his co-founder, Anthony DeLucia. Either way, you'll have the dopest cleats on the field. As an exclusive offer just for our listeners, use the promo code WTTS to get 10% off on your own custom kicks. Just go to kdcustomkicks.com, select your pair, and enter the code WTTS at the checkout to get 10% off. KD Custom Kicks. Look good, feel good. Without further ado, here's Alex Katz. We're talking to Alex Katz here. He's currently a member of the Chicago White Sox organization. He's in the minor leagues currently. Alex, uh, what level are you currently playing at? Uh, I finished last season in high A ball. So awesome. I'm not sure where I'm going to be playing this season. We usually find out towards the end of spring training. Okay, and, and when does when do you officially report to spring training? Um, I head out March 2nd, and minor league pitchers camp starts on March 4th in Glendale. Okay, sweet. So um, this podcast we're, we're geared toward the fan as always, and uh, we're trying to we try to provide our listeners with uh, different perspectives. So we've we've interviewed hitting coaches like. Uh, Justin Turner's hitting coach last year, Doug Latta. We've interviewed sports agents and so on and so forth. And um, I think this is the first time we're going to get the perspective of a minor league pitcher. So I've heard that it's it's rough to play in the minors because the travel is difficult. The schedule isn't that easy. Um, could you take us into that world a little bit? How is it like being a pitcher in minor league baseball? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not glorious like the like the big leagues. But at the same time, you're still, you know, you're still a professional baseball player. You're still getting paid to play baseball. You know, that's no matter how little or how how big that, you know, that paycheck is, it's still a dream come true to be able to, you know, play the game at my age. Not not saying I'm that old, but even you know, past high school or past college, and be able to get paid for it. So it's a, it's obviously a dream come true. Um, you know, obviously the minor leagues there's a lot of bus rides. It definitely is a grind, but you know, as as part of the process to work your way up to the big leagues. Here's a a lame question, real quick. So, like, what's what's the longest bus ride you've had to take from one city to the next? Um, in rookie ball in 2015, when I was in the Pioneer League with uh, the Great Falls Voyagers, we had a 15 hour bus ride. I oh. think it was from uh, Grand Junction, Colorado back home to great falls i think that was about 15 hours oh it wasn't, wasn't very fun so without giving us too much information i know there's probably some sort of player code you can't give up too much but what like what how is that how are you guys cranky in there are you guys having fun like how does that look like well it's usually after the last um the last game of the series and i think in this game in particular it was a night game so everyone was pretty tired mm-hmm. you know it was we drove throughout the night, so everyone was everyone was sleeping. You know, it's not it's not as comfortable as having your own bed. Yeah. But I think most of the time people were sleeping, and the bus stopped halfway. I guess you know either to fill up gas or switch bus drivers. And I remember it being six in the morning, and I just woke up super confused. You know, <laughs> you're not used to waking up in the middle of the night on a bus. You know, that was like a first. <laughs> and so, what? So you're a relief pitcher, correct? Yep. Okay, so was this your goal? Did you want to be a reliever, or, or was your goal always to be a starter, or starting pitcher? Yeah, I mean, I obviously have no choice when it comes to that. In college, in high school, I was a starter. In college, I did both. I came out of the bullpen and started. Personally, I like to, I like to, I like to come out of the bullpen. I like not knowing when I'm going to pitch. I like pitching multiple times a week. I don't like being on a set schedule and you know having four or five days off. Yeah. between between outings so i like to go back to back games i like to you know get the ball as much as i as i can so i think it's a perfect role for me you know and i'm happy that most teams think of me as a relief pitcher okay and this is something that i i get into arguments a lot with with a lot of my boys and stuff 
the mindset of a of a, of a relief pitcher. Like I'm, I'm of the belief that I know that 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 it's not the same coming in a relief as it is coming in as a starting pitcher. But I'm also of the belief that that if you're coming in as a relief pitcher, no, at, no matter at what point, you should be able to get the job done. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm not a big believer in closers. I think that that uh, any any I shouldn't say any pitcher because it's not that easy either. But I think if you're a relief pitcher, you should be you should be able to close out a game just as much as you know an Andrew Miller or something who's more of a setup guy. Do you agree with that, or do you think that there's a completely different mindset for a closer than there is for other relief pitchers? Uh, I, I think it's a completely different mindset, okay. and um, you know I don't think any I don't think you could take a sixth or seventh inning guy or at least all of them, and I don't think. I think most of them won't be successful as a closer. You know, it definitely takes a it definitely takes a different mindset. I think it's a totally different uh, you know type of person. You know, that's like that's like taking a long reliever. You know, maybe a guy that throws mid to upper eighties or touching ninety, mm-hmm. and just has average stuff. You know, gets a lot of ground ball outs. You know, I feel like the closer type you want a guy that punches a lot of tickets and strikes out a lot of guys. Okay. And getting that last out is is definitely the toughest. You know. Okay. The so, first out of the, you know, is obviously 27 outs when you're in the field. So the first out of the game is, is nothing compared to that 27th out. You okay. know, just, just the mindset, the mindset of the hitters changes, which, you know, really affects, you know, how that outcome of the game is. So I totally, I think, I think it's a totally different kind of pitcher just because, you know, I think those hitters are a lot more locked in and those guys are battling. So you have to, you know, you have to bring your A game as a closer. You know, you can't just slack and, and give a few base hits because you're going to blow the game. Yeah. I might have to edit that out because I need to win this battle, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just kidding. But, okay, so I, I'm with you on that. But but if if you were if, – if your coach were to take you tomorrow and, and say to you, um, you're going to start closing out games for us now, do you think that your preparation is going to be any different or, or anything like that? Or do you think you're going to come at it the same way you do now? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um you know, whether I pitch a third inning or a ninth inning, I'm trying to, you know, trying to get ahead in the count, trying to show that I hit him my best stuff, trying to get him out as quick as possible. So personally, my mindset won't change, but, you know, it's just a totally different atmosphere, whether you're pitching in the sixth inning or fourth yeah. inning or, you know, or pitching in that ninth inning. I feel yeah. like it's just a different, it's just a different setting, you know. Okay. Um, and then on a, on a different note, and then I'll move away from pro baseball and kind of Tarantino this and bring it back because I want to get to know you a little bit more. Um, this new thing with the opener, how do you feel about that? Do you do you like that strategy? Are you in favor of it, or do you think it's too much? Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not too familiar with it just because I've never, you know, I've never done it in any of my games. I've I've seen the Tampa Bay Rays do it a few times, but you know, I haven't. I don't think I watched that game a lot. I've just saw some highlights. Okay. Um, you know, if it works, it works. You know, who's to say that, you know, who's to say a starting pitcher has to go or has to pitch, you know, a certain amount of innings or, you know, there's no, you know, obviously I have been done before until I guess this year with the Rays. But, you know, if it works, it works. You know, you, you, you got to do whatever it takes to win. Yeah, I agree with you. I I, uh, I wrote a piece on it because uh, of Madison Bumgarner's recent uh, um, comments. Or actually, he didn't he didn't make a comment. It was leaked that he had texted Bruce Bochy that if Bruce Bochy were to use an opener in one of his starts, that he's going to walk out of the ballpark. And um, yeah, yeah. So I wrote a piece on it because I I delved a little bit deeper, and I don't want to be like a Brian Kenny who you know he's kind of annoying on him. I like him, but he's kind of annoying on MLB Network. He's a little too much. Um, but I was, I delved a little deeper into his numbers and I saw that in the first inning, he struggles more than he does in other innings. And it's pro it's probably because you face the team's best hitters in the first inning guaranteed. You're going to face them that it, there, no other inning is that going to happen guaranteed. Um, and I think that an opener would work for a guy like Madison Bumgarner, but I also like his personality that he wants the ball. He's the kind of guy he's like, give it to me. I, I got this. You know, you want to, you want to have that kind of guy on your team too. Um, exactly. Yeah. So all right, so I want to I want to dial it back a little bit. So I I was reading up on you doing doing a little bit, of, excuse me, doing a little bit of research. I see that you were born on Long Island. Is that right? Yep. All right, yeah. So Long I, Island. Cool. I'm a New York kid too. I was yeah. bo- I was born in Manhattan. Oh. I'm from I'm from Washington Heights. 
uh, I love seeing guys from New York representing because you don't get to see it that often. Like Adelan Batances, Adam Adovino, you. It's awesome. Um, so I saw that you also went to Herrick's High School. <clears throat> Excuse me. Could you uh, could you tell us a little bit about your your playing time in high school? I saw that that uh, you were affiliated with Perfect Game. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I um, I went to Herrick's High School, which is a public high school in New Hyde Park. Mm-hmm. Um, probably about five five minutes from the Queens border, so not too far away from from Manhattan. Okay, uh, you know, kind of the, the most western part of Long Island that you could get. So, um, you know, I, I grew up near the city, um, played a lot of travel ball throughout the city, Bronx, uh, Queens, Suffolk County, you know, travel around the country towards the end of high school, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, public high school on Long Island, you don't play that many games. So honestly, I don't have too many, you know, too many experiences with, with high school baseball in Long Island. It's unfortunate because, you know, I, I loved the experience that I had, but the season was very, very short. You know, it was like 15 or 18 games. Wow. You know, and then going to, to going to college, you play 60, 55 or 60 games, you know, maybe plus playoffs. And then obviously in pro ball, you're playing 100 plus games. So, you know, the, the season was, it was very, very short. But at the same time, I had a, I had a great time in high school. That's awesome. Um, you know, and then in, um, in high school, I also played travel ball for a few teams. Um, I finished high school playing for Hanks Yanks, which was a team that was sponsored by Hank Steinbrenner, one yeah. of the owners on the Yankees. Yeah. And uh, Ray Negron, who was an assistant to Steinbrenner, he, he started that um, that team. And I think I think at the time it was one of the best you know teams in the country. You know, I think I think from that one team we had, there were like twenty guys that got drafted. There's a few guys in the big leagues. Um, right now, and a, a bunch of guys working their way up. So, and that was a that was that was obviously a great experience. We went we went down to Tampa and got to visit the Yankees complex um, during one of our breaks in high school, and we got to meet some of the Yankees. We met Derek Jeter and all those guys. So That's that awesome. was pretty inspirational. And it's definitely a, a cool organization because you know it's almost fully sponsored and. There's kids of all different socioeconomic backgrounds on the team. You know, a lot of these travel teams these days cost five thousand yeah. dollars for the season. So you know, you have to have money to play. Yeah. So I think that was something special that we had with that team. So it, the team was chosen strictly on talent. You know, and giving guys opportunity rather than whoever had the most amount of money, which that, is what's like unfortunately these days. You know? That that's really cool, especially in New York City. Um, I remember. In middle school, I went to Catholic high school, and we didn't have the funds to to uh, to field a baseball team. But I remember middle school, my best friend and I, who actually went to St. John's, like you did, and uh, we like we vouched for a baseball team so bad, and we finally got one. But we couldn't afford uniforms, so we had T-shirts. And then we were playing in like regular parks, and our coach. <laughs> there were times where our coach didn't even show up, so we had to forfeit games. So it's really hard to field a baseball team in New York City. It's why basketball is such a big sport in New York um, as opposed to baseball. But, it, you know, that's really cool that you got you got that experience, and I think that that's awesome. That, that's awesome to hear on this podcast. I hope a lot of kids listening know that there's other ways to to find baseball teams out there in New York. Um, and just on an, on an aside, I taught in Long Island City for three years. I was a New York City public school teacher. Uh, were you near there? Um. Lawn City is probably about 25, 30 minutes okay. from me, you know, without traffic. Obviously, there's a lot of traffic in New York. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Lawn, yeah, Lawn City is, that's like right across the river from Manhattan. So that's, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's still a little bit away from me. Okay, okay. All right. And then, uh, so you, you move on to St. John's and you had some success there. Could you tell us a little bit about your time in St. John's? Yeah, so I was a freshman in fall of 2012. Uh, so spring of 2013 was my first season. Um, we, we had a lot of freshmen on that team. Um, it was a very young team that year. We didn't, you know, a lot of talent, but everyone was pretty raw, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of guys coming from public high school, you know, uh, the competition isn't really, you know, it's it's good, but it doesn't compare to, you know, top-level 
D1 competition. So there were a lot of we had a lot of raw, young, unexperienced freshmen that t- that year. We didn't we didn't really have the best year, but mm-hmm. you know by the time sophomore junior year came around, uh, everyone on that team, especially the young guys, you know they they all developed, and we had a solid team sophomore year, and then an unbelievable team my junior year, and um, I think we had six or seven guys drafted that year. Uh, we won the Big East tournament, the Big East regular season. Um, we made it to the regionals and we lost in a championship game against Arkansas. Oh, and, um, you know, we, we eliminated some, some solid teams in that, in that regional. I know we beat, um, Oklahoma state. They were the hosts. We eliminated them. See, um, and there were a couple more teams, a couple more teams. I forgot the names mm-hmm. that, um, that we ended up beating. Any Oral player Roberts was in that. Any, any players that we're familiar with that you played with, uh, during your time in St. John's? Yeah, at St. John's or against or other teams. or even against, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, in my, my the last batter that I faced in college, I, I got him out three times. Was Andrew Benintendi? He was the what? last guy I faced. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, no, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I started in that championship game against Arkansas. It was a zero-zero game going into the fifth, so it was a pretty competitive game. But I think their pitcher had us no hit through like five. So wow, you know, it was, a, it was kind of a pitcher's duel that game. Um. Yeah, we faced a bunch of good good players. Trey Mancini, I know your name. Um, Daniel Palka, I think from Georgia Tech. He's mm-hmm. with the White Sox now. Uh, we faced a, we faced a lot of good players, especially um, you know freshman year. The old Big East Conference was pretty le- legitimate. Um, I think cool. we played Chad. We faced Chad Green that year. I think. Mm-hmm. I think he might have been a junior or senior at Louisville that year. I'm not I'm not really sure, but there were there were some good players That's that we awesome. played against. That's really cool. Um, so then you're you're drafted by the White Sox. We spoke about that a little bit. So I'm gonna jump to I'm gonna jump to the WBC in 2017. Um, I'm just gonna assume just based on the fact that on on your Twitter account and f- please everybody follow Alex Katz on Twitter at Kitty Elgato 12. Um, your profile pick is you pitching for Team Israel in the WBC. Um, tell us about that time. Like like, were, you know how did that feel to pitch for Team Israel? Oh, it was it was a dream come true. I tried, I tried getting in that team my freshman year of college, but obviously that didn't work out because you know I wasn't a professional and it was mostly professional guys on that team. Yeah. But um, you know, guys Peter and all those guys running the Israel um, Association of Baseball, the governing body of of baseball in Israel, they you know they keep tabs on all the guys that play professionally so they kept tracking me, tracking me since I got drafted or maybe even before I got drafted and you know just stayed in touch and when that qualifier came in 2016 in the fall in Brooklyn mm-hmm. you know that that was awesome when I found that that was one of the best emails I've ever you know I've ever gotten or ever opened that said I made the team for the qualifiers um you know, I didn't pitch in those qualifiers. They pitched most of the veteran guys because they didn't really know much about the players. You know, they they obviously picked based on all the info they had, but most of the guys that had big league time, like a Craig Breslow, like he got the ball a lot. Mm-hmm. And we won that tournament. And, you know, that, that was awesome because that meant that we were in the main tournament going to Korea. But the roster spots were still up in there. I wasn't sure if I was going to even make the team for the main tournament in March. Um, you know, they didn't really see me pitch, so they didn't know really what I had. Right. And, you know, l- luckily I made that team and I did well. We had a mini camp in Arizona and that's an exhibition games in Korea and I threw well. And then, you know, be- I guess because of that, I was able to, you know, they gave me the ball in the first game against Korea. We beat them. And then I pitched three more games after that. So, you know, obviously we had 200 to one odds of winning the whole tournament. I guess we defied the odds a little bit. We started mm-hmm. off 4-0. And, and, you know, there was definitely talent on that team, but the chemistry was unbelievable. You know, everybody you th- was, was playing for the same reason. So it was, a, it, was, it was an amazing experience. So a lot of people don't don't tend to like the WBC because they're afraid that their players are going to get injured, like Mark Teixeira did a few years back, uh, playing for an exhibition game. Personally, I'm, I'm my parents are Dominican immigrants. I grew up in New York City. I love baseball. I grew up like a like a mile away from Yankee Stadium. 
I love the WBC and and I love I love seeing guys go all out for their countries or for the countries that they re- they they want to represent. Um, I saw that you became a dual citizen in, at, in Israel as well. Um, my question is, is it different pitching for a team representing uh, re- representing something personal in you as opposed to a uniform that belongs to some sort of corporate entity? Not to speak badly about any organization, but is it different pitch- pitching for a team like Israel than it is for the White Sox organization, for example? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It definitely... You know, there's obviously similarities. You know, people are watching. You're still trying to, you know, prove yourself as a player, you know, I guess personally, I guess kind of selfishly too, because you're trying to, you know, you're trying to make it up to the big leagues if you aren't there already. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, playing for your your nationality, your country, you know, most of the guys on that team are not from Israel, but, you know, almost all of them are Jewish or have, everyone has some sort of Jewish background. So I guess playing for that, is um you know that's totally different than obviously playing for a team you know one of the 30 mlb teams or organizations it's, it's a little different you know when you're playing during a regular season obviously in the big leagues you're playing to win a win a world series but in the minor leagues most of the time it's not about winning it's you know it's kind of selfish i guess mm-hmm. not to put it down but you know it's your job everyone's trying to everyone's trying to prove themselves everyone's trying to move up but when it comes to the world baseball classic you know you're not selfish at all. It's all about the team, 100%. I totally get it. W- was there ever a question uh, about which team you wanted to play for? Like, w- was there ever a question that it would be that, you know, that you would want to pitch for Team USA? Or was it always Team Israel, 100%? Yeah, definitely um, definitely 100% Team Israel. Um, I wouldn't have made Team USA. Most of the guys on there are, are big league all-stars. So mm-hmm. part of it had to do with the opportunity. But... You know, I plan on playing for Team Israel as long as I can, as long as I'm playing. That's awesome, man. And you tossed, uh, from what I from what I saw, you tossed 3.1 scoreless innings or three three and a third scoreless scoreless innings, um, and I believe that was across four games. Is that right? Yep. Yep. That's that's great, man. That's awesome. Um, and so let's move on to present day. So you you said before we got on, I wanted to clarify which organization you were with. You're back with the Chicago White Sox. Um, organization uh, in Class A ball, um, and you currently are a co-founder for a sneaker company called KD Custom Kicks. So follow them on Instagram. Their stuff is is awesome, guys. Um, so they're at KD Custom Kicks on IG. I'm not sure if you're on any other social media uh, platforms. Uh, are you anywhere else? Are you on Twitter or anything like that? Yeah, Twitter is the same handle. Um, okay. and facebook.com slash katie custom kicks but most of the stuff is on instagram and obviously we have a website which is katie custom kicks.com right so katie custom kicks.com and it's it's so and correct me if i'm wrong what i see is that you guys create custom obviously custom kicks custom cleats for baseball players custom cleats for football players custom sneakers for basketball players and you guys offer just regular you know, sneak. If I wanted to go and buy a pair of sneakers just to wear tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? Can I get them on your website? Yeah, it's not. It's not just limited to professionals. You know, we do a lot of, we do a lot of middle school, high school kids. You know, kids of all different ages. Okay. You know, females who don't play sports. You know, men that don't play sports. You know, it's not limited to just uh, professional baseball players or football players or basketball players. So anyone can order. Okay. Awesome. And. Where did this idea come from? What what inspired you to start this company? Yeah, it actually started as a joke. Um, in 2017, when I knew I was gonna be on the World Baseball Classic team for Team mm-hmm. Israel, I had um, I had my cleats picked out for the tournament, and they were just some basic blue um, cleats. And I asked my friend Anthony, who is a big sneakerhead, um, I knew that he um, he painted some of his own shoes before just for fun. You know, nothing serious. He never painted cleats before, but I thought, just the the thought came to my mind one day, what if I painted my cleats, you know? I knew the uniforms were going to be gray and blue or silver and blue, so I had some gray and, and silver to the cleats one day at Anthony's house. We spent a couple hours on them, and they came out pretty good, considering that was our first pair of, my first pair of shoes I've ever worked on, Anthony's first pair of cleats he's ever worked on. So I said, like, hey, we have, we have to... You know, 
we have to put a picture up on Instagram, you know, whether it's my page or create a new page for this. And we, we kind of just made a new Instagram page and we just called it KD custom kicks. Cause my last name is cats. His last name is Delusia. So KD, I figured it'd be easy to remember, you know, cause people know Kevin Durant. So those two yeah. letters flowed together pretty well. And at that point it was still a joke. I, I just asked some of my friends to follow it. And then, you know, I guess the joke turned into something that, you know, it turned serious pretty quickly when a bunch of my friends started wanting their cleats done. You know, within a couple of weeks, we were getting orders from guys on the Yankees like Aaron Judge. So That's awesome. it kind of it, it kind of blew up pretty quickly. You know, very yeah. unexpected. And if you go on uh, kdcustomkicks.com, you can click on clientele. And you'll see a long list of Major League Baseball players and and uh, football players and, ba- and basketball players that have ordered kicks from you guys. And I was looking at at uh, Adam Jones's uh, customs, and it's a bunch of food all around it. Could you tell me like what was behind that idea? Is that his idea? Is that you guys' idea? You know what I'm saying? I know that it's very specific. Yeah. You're gonna have to like d- dial back and try to find wh- what I'm talking about. But it looks like yeah, there's no, McDonald's. I... There's McDonald's fries yeah. on it. There's a pizza on it. <laughs> yeah, no, he uh, it's his hashtag is stay hungry. He he loves food. <laughs> you know, I guess mostly junk food. I guess he likes. Mm-hmm. Um, but you no, know, we stayed in contact with him. Obviously, I was with the Orioles at that point, so you know we stayed in touch. He's a great guy, and he told us that he wants food all over his kicks, and that was for um, or his cleats. That was for um, Players Weekend last year, where players really have free range to wear mm-hmm. whatever they want, any nickname on their jersey, any cleats they want. And those were actually Nike Monarch shoes that we got um, cleated by a friend of ours who's also on Long Island. He put the cleats on the bottom, and then he sent them to us, and then Anthony painted them. And I think one side of one shoe is actually all healthy food, I guess, because Adam Jones's wife is into health. Mm. And then the rest of the shoe is full of kind candy, lollipops, pizza, chocolate. That's great, man. That's awesome. And and I was looking at so I'm I'm my nationality is Dominican. I'm not Colombian, but I love the Wilson Ramos uh, customs that you guys made. It's re- yeah. they're they're really cool. I mean, you guys have to check these out. It's kdcustomkicks.com. I'm not just blowing smoke. It's it, it's a really cool product. And um, as Alex said, I have a lot of friends that play amateur ball. You guys should definitely check this out and um, cop a couple of a uh, couple of customs. Um, I wanted to ask what goes behind these orders when so when a couple of Yankee players reach out to you guys like. First off, what's your what's going through your mind when Aaron Judge reaches out to you and says, "I want a couple of uh, cleats," and then how do you go about designing what he wants? For example, yeah, it all, it all varies. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of players just randomly DM us on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's um, it's through their agent. You know, some of these agencies have you know thirty players, so one agent is you know obviously a good connection to have because they might have a, a crazy amount of players. And sometimes you just deal with them. Sometimes you deal with the agent and the player. But most of the time, you're just dealing with the player, and they basically just you know, tell you what their idea is. If they have no idea, then we'll help them design something, and then um, we offer something called a freestyle. So maybe okay. you know a guy at Mets has no idea what he wants, but he knows he wants something with orange and blue. So then Anthony, who does all the work, I don't really do the work, obviously, I'm playing. You know, I do mm-hmm. most, a lot of the social media stuff on my phone. Um, Anthony will, will get the shoe in his hand, and based on creativity, he'll, he'll come up with a cool design, you know, with the colors that the player wants. Okay. That's really cool, man. That's an awesome an awesome idea, and it's it's just crazy how something you do for fun can, can take off. And it, it's looking like you guys are taking off. I saw on your Instagram – uh, the other day that you guys were on MLB Network, uh, how was that experience like? Yeah, that that was surreal. Um, I thought I was just going to the studios to get a tour, and uh, <laughs> five minutes later, I was asked if I want to, if we want to go on the show. So it all happened pretty quickly, and it, it was a crazy experience. That's insane, man. If you could give some advice to some kid out there, so we're trying to target an audience of fans, people that love baseball. Um and want to f- figure out a way to to make it someday. What advice could you offer some of these kids? 
yeah, just uh, you know, it's heard, it's heard, you know, by I guess many people, a lot of people say it, but uh, you really have to trust the process. You know, I I work with some kids in the off season, you know, teaching them pitching, and a lot of kids are wondering, you know, they're kind of frustrated. Why am I not throwing 90 miles per hour right now? You know, it's a process. You know, I'm I'm 24 years old. You know, I. I, would, I train and work out with guys in the big leagues who are in their 30s, and these guys are still trying to get better. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you never have it figured out, no matter how good you are. So you, you can't be frustrated, you know, no matter how much failure you have. You know, if you get better, if you get a little bit better every day, it's all going to add up, you know. And awesome. even once it all is added up, you still have to keep working. So, you know, never, never, I guess, never doubt yourself. And never be satisfied at the same time. Nice. That's really good advice. Uh, before I sign off, I just wanted to ask you one more question. Um, do you still live in Long Island? I don't, don't give away your address or anything, but do you still come back home to Long Island or have you relocated to where your your team is? No, I'm, I'm still in Long Island. So, okay. Uh, I'm stuck in the cold. So when I come home, it starts getting cold out. And when I leave, it starts getting warm out. So nice. I'm stuck in the cold. <laughs> How long is your oh, minor season. leagues? Do you guys do you, after the the minor league season ends? Do you play in any uh, winter leagues or anything like that? Um, well, next year, depending on my schedule, um, okay, I possibly will play in the Olympic qualifiers for Israel. That's nice. if my season's already ended. But um, you know, I don't know what the plans are for next off season. But awesome, you know that Israel qualifiers for the Olympics are definitely um, in my schedule if I'm available. Um, all right, so that was Alex Katz, uh, kdcustomkicks.com. Follow him at Kitty Elgato12 on IG and on Twitter. And uh, make sure you take a look at those kicks, man. They're really cool. Thank you so much for coming on, Alex. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon. Yep, take care. So that was Alex Katz. Chicago White Sox prospect, founder of KD Custom Kicks. I want to thank Alex Katz for coming on the show. Uh, I learned a lot from this cat. Um, being a guy that worked, grew up in New York City, I didn't know that there were programs out there for travel baseball and stuff like that for kids uh, in in you know middle middle school and high school. I knew that there were teams. I know that my best friend Gus played for a few years for a sponsored team uh, for Cafe Bustelo. Um, and he played a lot in the Bronx and stuff like that uh, during his high school years. Uh, but for a kid like me growing up, if you want me to be honest, I wasn't I wasn't really a motivated kid. I was ha- I was really happy just staying home, um, watching movies and, and playing video games and stuff. Uh, I, I you know I wasn't gonna go out there and search that information. And by the same token, it wasn't available to me at my school. And that's not to say anything negative about my school. I'm really happy with the school that I went to in New York City. But um, that was great talking to Alex, man. It's and it's and it's, it's inspiring to see that that kids from New York can make it in Major League Baseball. Uh, baseball still very much alive in New York, in New York City. You got guys out there like Adam Adovino, Dylan Batances. You got Alex Katz, and so on and so forth. So many, so many more players that that come from New York that are representing in baseball. And uh, it was it was great speaking to Alex. And of course, don't forget about that promo code. Uh, that's WTTS. If you go to kdcustomkicks.com, you can create your own kicks or you can purchase one that's already available and enter the promo code WTTS at checkout and you'll get 10% off any kicks on kdcustomkicks.com. So once again, thank you, Alex Katz, and thank you for listening. Peace. Peace.